Creative Katie here, Karen Birchill, and today we are going to create textured embellishments, or at least the beginnings of them. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and select the option to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. So the textured embellishments come from two iCADs that I created. And here you have a little tag in the middle underneath the dragonfly that I textured with modeling paste. Then I use that idea to texturize some cutout circles for this iCAD. And I just love how these looked like metal. So I wanted to test out some ideas. I wanted to know if I could make these embellishments kind of ahead of time so I'm not dragging out the modeling paste in the middle of a project and then they would be in my stash ready to to use so the question I had is okay can you do a whole sheet of this and then would you be able to cut through it easily without making a big mess and dust and what kind of paper does it need to be now in this video, I used paper that I, you often see me using. That's about double the weight of regular copy paper. And that's what I used to make the embellishments for those both of those iCADs. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to use some mixed media paper. And then I'm going to use just plain old copy paper because everybody has that. Now I went through my stencils and what you want is a stencil that is smaller scale. These embellishments are not going to be huge so you want them to be able to fit and add some interest to those embellishments. And when I say embellishments you can use any shape, circles, squares, diamonds, hearts, um, I dare say butterflies, flower petals. So I'm taking the stencil and I am just taping it down so that I get as neat a um, application of modeling paste as possible. Now I thought okay does it matter here if we use flexible modeling paste which as the name says needs can be more flexible in applications where you need that flexibility or light modeling paste. So one half of the stencil I am using flexible modeling paste which has I believe crushed marble in it with the polymer and the light modeling paste both are Liquitex brand, 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 brand sorry and and that just has fiber in it does it make a difference there when it comes to cutting it out I am and doing that so those were the questions. So I'm using different kinds of papers and different um, materials for the modeling paste. So one half and I'm marking this because I'm not sure if it's going to make a difference or not. So at the top I've written an F for flexible and an L for light pointing which side of the paper it is so I wouldn't forget. Now, the modeling paste is reactivating some spray or something that I have on, on the stencil but that's not going to impact um, what I'm doing here. So I'm setting that aside to dry and I'm just going to apply modeling paste through the stencil again one half flexible one half light. Now I'm using the credit card and I find if you're doing large surfaces the credit card works easier than a palette knife to apply the texture paste, modeling paste, what have you. I find I have way more success when I do that. And I'll put the names of each of these stencils when you see the effects you maybe something that you might go in search of. All three of these are stencils that I use a lot in a lot of my projects. They're very kind of generalized in their use and therefore make a good mixed media stencil. And 
And as always, in between here, I am cleaning those stencils. And then I thought to myself, you know what? I've also used drywall compound through stencils. Can we use that? This whole tub of this cost $8, which is what the flexible modeling paste on sale 50% off at Michael's was. So I'm just applying that to, and I believe that's copy paper as well. And I'm just reusing one of the stencils that I already had out. Because we can do this cheaper and easier. Why wouldn't we? So there I've used that on, I'm showing you a journal page that I've actually used the wall compound and it's been there for two years and it's still there and you know it takes paint really nicely. So these have been dried with the heat tool. Now the lighter paper, the copy paper, it is buckling a little bit under the weight of that. Uh, whereas the mixed media, which is the heaviest paper that I've used here, is lying flat. But when it came to cutting this out, it didn't matter whether it was flexible modeling paste, light modeling paste, wall compound. They all cut as easily. None of them um, cracked or crumbled or created dust. So uh, use what you have. Don't think you need to get a different, um, different product than what you have. I'm just cutting out just, you know, circles. And I've marked on the back what kind of paper it is and what I've used in the way of modeling paste on it. Now, if all you have is copy paper, use that. But, you know, it, it does make a difference once you start applying um, colors on there. So, you know, go through the recycling bin packaging, the uh, cardboard that you get in magazines, um, some of the things you get in mailers. Um, when you're taking trips and tours, often they are printed on thicker paper. So um, use that. So now I'm simply applying different paints. And again, it didn't matter which paint. Um, you know, I thought, okay, I'm going to test out whether it does matter which paints. And here I'm using just craft paints. And I found them to be a little thinner. You had to be a way more careful in applying this top coat. Now you can play with whatever color scheme that you want. Um, my Martha Stewart pearlized paints were too transparent here, or to, um, to give up to show much so I would not be using those the Pebio iridescent gave some effect but it was very very subtle and it for me that's not what I would would look for But again, that is up to personal taste. So whatever color you put underneath, you can have a lighter color underneath and a darker color rubbed on top. Now when you're rubbing it on top, if it's a thicker paint, you will have more success. So using a heavier body paint like Liquitex Basics does make a difference. It, it, it makes it easier. You can use whatever you have. I'm just telling you if some of the, if you, if it's thinner paint, you're going to have to be a little bit more careful in the application of it and you may run into more difficulties so here I'm just playing with different color schemes um, trying to think out of the box really not liking a whole lot of what I'm getting so I'm drawing the first layer of acrylic paint and there I would say you could use any kind of paint for the top layer, that's where I would use a paint that is more opaque and a paint that is maybe thicker, and that will make it easier. And if you tap and use the, the 
pad of your finger. And it's a very imperfect system. And I guess you have to embrace the imperfections that come along with this. Here was one color combination that I really liked. I used brown on top of the yellow. And I here I've used a uh, felt applicator, a Ranger felt applicator to put it on. And that works rather well. But you have to make sure that you have a fairly thick layer of modeling paste. But I like the yellow brown combination and I would I think I could play with that. So there are the colors and things that I have gotten so far. But you know me, I love my gold. So I thought, okay, on the iCAD videos, I put gold on top. What if I had gold underneath? How would that look? And that's what I'm testing out here. What I did find is that when you're applying with the pads of your finger, again, the copy paper was my least favorite. You can do it, but it was definitely more difficult to, to do. It didn't lie as flat. You were more likely um, to get the paint on more surfaces than the raised surfaces, if that makes sense. So here, using the felt applicator, I'm just applying blue on top of the gold. And I like this color combination. This was one I could see myself using again. Now, the advantage of having them pre-colored is that they're in your stash. You can take them out when you have a background and audition them. And they're already colored, and you're that much further ahead. The advantage of having them just in your stash in white is you could, whatever color you need them to be, that's what you can do at that time. So I like the idea of doing opposites. So now I'm just applying, doing some that are with the drywall paste. And like I said, it didn't make any more dust. It wasn't any more difficult than any other. I really did expect this to be problematic, to going and cutting it. So what I'm going to do is, is just do a whole bunch of pages that are just even blank. I'm not even going to trace any shape on it, that they will be at the ready with, you know, different textures. So I'm going to have to, you know, sit down once and get a whole bunch done. So I decide I'm going to try my mermaid markers. You could do this with your watercolor paints as well, your uh, ink tents blocks, any of that. And I'm just applying the color randomly and then I'm going to spray it. And you get a very unpredictable look because you can't, you don't know how the water and paints are going to flow and how the color is going to be, and that's the advantage of using watercolor. Disadvantage is it's going to reactivate when you go to adhere it onto your page. Now to make this work, I would put some kind of shimmer and shine in there. It just was too flat. There was the texture was didn't come out enough for my liking. And this is just another one that I did. Now this video is just the beginnings of experimenting with making textured embellishments. The paper is way flimsier. Go and do something else, and then come and share it with us in the Facebook group. All things the the creative Katie. Medium did not flow as well, Everybody's so I would definitely, if I'm using water soluble stuff, I would well definitely so put. You may use a color combination that I would use. You may use a medium that I'm not going, that I didn't think to use. So there are the balls that I have, and you know, I mean, this they could be used right now uh, on a Christmas tree spread. 
So I went and I cut different sized hearts and different sized stars out of the remaining papers that I had. And there they are. So I'm just going to leave these white like this. And again, you can leave them white and then you will be able to color them however it's going to work on whatever spread you're doing. I also save the little throwaway pieces because I think that will add some interesting texture on an art journal page. So I have some more circles here and you know I admit I, I really like the black background the best. So I thought okay I'm gonna if that's the case what other options do I have other than gold? Because that's my go-to and it's an amazing effect and I can definitely guarantee that I'm going to do it again but you know I wanted to play with other colors as well. And I can't remember why I decided to paint do these with gesso other than that it would take color all the same way. So before I went back to my acrylics, I just had some Lindy spray on my desk and I thought, okay, I'm going to give them a try. And I thought, you know, on the black, it's going to show up. Some of that shimmer is going, the mica powders is going to show up. But it was really underwhelming. It didn't give a big enough effect for me to do. So then I tried one on the white gessoed. And I'm just applying more layers, different colors on both the black gessoed circle, textured circle, and the black. The only way you're going to know, again, if you like a color combination is to try it. If you don't like it, you can always paint over it, re it, start over. So putting the Lindy spray on the black not didn't really get me in any kind of effect that I would use. I don't mind it on the white with the diff two different colors. I may play with that more. So I'm just applying different colors with the palm of my finger. And there I kind of got too far in there. And you could just apply a coat of gesso to get rid of it. So here's my all time favorite. I just love the look of the gold on paper. Like I said, the thicker the paper, the better. It does, you know, it, de it did make a difference. It did made it easier to do, but use what you have. Now some of the paints, like this pink, you know, they're a little bit more transparent. And so you have to dry, apply more layers to get the effect. So if you look on the tube, if it says it's opaque, it has more opaque coverage, then you're probably going to see more of it. So I'm just experimenting with different colors on the black background. And I'm liking the contrast with the black. It definitely is my favorite. And I'm always careful to get extra little bit of paint on the edge. It kind of just finishes it off. The goal here isn't to get perfect coverage and have it all perfect. So I admit while I was playing, there were many times that I was, you know, painted over it because it, I just didn't like how it turned out or it didn't show enough. 
The whole point of having that texture is to see it and have it add visual interest and pattern to your project. It occurs to me now you could probably put two colors on top of a black background. That's something I've never done. All in all, I spent about probably about two hours playing with these circles, trying different color combinations and seeing what I liked. This yellow, when I put it on, always seemed to take on a greenish tone. So there must be, you know, and I didn't really like that color. So there I'm grabbing a different yellow. So really, when it comes to this, use thicker paper. You can make it ahead of time, no problem. Doesn't matter what kind of modeling paste you have. And play with the color schemes until you get something that you like. Have some in your stash that are colored and ready to go. Have some that are just white. And then have some just plain sh sheets of them that can be cut and customized for a page. So there's my finished ones. Thanks for watching.